new shot project. I'm gonna take this plate, cut it in half and weld it back together to make like a square surface for a tabletop for Dave. Now he's not a metal worker, so it's not gonna be super stout, but he just wants the table he can leave outside as opposed to his wooden workbench. So get the plate, um, you turn down this big heavy plate. I got some legs. These are long enough I can cut in half and make legs. And I may use this big old heavy angle. This is from Brick Lentils from the demo house. And uh, go around the perimeter, maybe stiffen it up a little bit. And I've never tried to weld two plates together and have them come out flat. So this would be interesting. It could be a disaster. But anyway, charged up the forklift yesterday. So let's get it, grab the sheet and bring it inside. And the last time I used a plasma torch, uh, the tip gave out on me. So I had a couple of parts, spare parts here, and I kind of cobbled them together, and hopefully the plasma torch will make a good cut. Plasma torches are really cool. They're, um, they're electric. They're, what I mean is they're not burning uh, map gas or propane or propylene or acetylene. Or they're, they're, it's an electrical spark. And it, it is hooked up to the air compressor because it does need uh, the air to blow out the molten metal and to blow the, the plasma through the metal. But uh, yeah, it's electric, no gas. So it, you never need to uh, run and get a tank if your air compressor is running. Probably not as pretty as a lot of YouTube guys, but I got it cut in half and nothing terrible happened. I'm gonna put it up on a table. Well, yeah, I'm gonna put it on a table and grind the edges so I can think about making a weld. Okay, got it up on the table and I got it pretty flat right here and pretty flat at the far end and the middle is really wavy. Part of that is because the sides are wavy. But anyway, I'm gonna weld maybe an inch on each end and just kind of work my way across. Put a little weld every six inches or so and then we'll flip it over and try to get some on the back. I had to put down a little cleat and wedge those first three little dots, but the rest of it's fairly flat. So I'm just gonna put three more dots and then see if I can't turn it over and put three dots on or six dots on the other side and leave it unwelded until I do the perimeter. Yeah, it's so thin, it's gonna be hard to keep this thing flat.
Okay, you probably can't tell by looking at this video, but I haven't been here in like a month, or I haven't worked on this tabletop in a month. We had other projects. Um, so I'm back at it, and I need to put a, a brace around the perimeter, like a one and a half by one and a half angle would be perfect. I don't have that. I'm not going to buy anything. Remember, this is for David to have an outside table. He is not a welder. He's not gonna be beating on it with a two pound hammer or a 12 pound hammer. It's just something he can leave outside and not have it warp or come apart. So I think what I'm gonna do, I have, I have this girt, C-channel girt. If it's long enough, I can rip it here and here and here and get two little angles out of each length. So that would do it. Let me get it, let me get it out of here and get some measurements. Okay, it's long enough. Let me clean off some of the heavy rust and I'm gonna try to cut this with the plasma torch. Okay, cleaned up with the wire cup on the grinder pretty easily actually, pretty quickly. So now I measured this flange and actually, I measured the other flange, too, and they're not the same, which is kind of surprising. But I averaged them, and I put a mark here. This So this is the same as this. And then I put a mark this distance down here. So if I cut this, this, and the other two, I'll have four strips of a rolled angle. And they should all be more or less the same. And I decided to do this with the grinder instead of the plasma torch. I think I can get a straighter line. Uh, with the less waste I can I think I can just do better with the grinder so we're gonna give it a shot did this two different ways. The first two cuts, I took the grinder and scribed the line. So I'm like maybe halfway through the metal, maybe not that much. And then I came back and cut all the way through the metal. And then on the last two cuts, I just started from one end and I cut all the way through. Um, and I couldn't really tell that one was really better than the other. Um, <clears throat> one of them made the metal warp more and then I threw them up on the table and got confused which one was which. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what the best way to do it is, but uh, we got to cut, and I got it cut in a straighter line than I would have with the plasma torch for sure. Well, my new steel tabletop is very warped and twisty and my angles are very warped and twisty, but by carefully clamping them and using the edge of the big table as a straight edge, I got this first side straight. So I'm gonna uh, put some serious tacks inside and outside. I got it wire brushed and the edge grinded and uh, let it go and see what happens. I think it will be fine. And then I'll rotate it 90 degrees and do another side, rotate it, do another side. And when I'm all through, maybe it'll be flat, but it may pucker up in the middle. I'm sure I'm gonna have to put some kind of steel down the middle to weld it to. Uh, I just don't know how heavy, but uh, let's get to welding. So you guys know I don't see so great. Well, it gets worse. There's a little rubber, or there was a little rubber seal that went around inside my hood and it fell off, it you know dry rotted and fell off. So now my breath makes fog up between the two lenses. Now I really can't see, I gotta do something about that. So now I'm, now I'm putting wells where there's nothing to weld to and I'm welding to the table. So yeah, that's not gonna cut it. But anyway, if I cut this loose and cut this loose, hopefully it'll stay put and not bow up Clamps are off and I cut the weld, two wells where I had welded it to the table. 
And it stayed pretty dead gum straight. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees, fit the, the next angle to this angle and do the same thing. I would video welding, but I, my camera doesn't do that well. And it's pretty uninteresting anyway. Before clamps, after clamps. I leave this long, I cut myself. Cause it makes it, gives me something to pry on. After I get it welded, I'll cut that off. And the same, I did that the first go around too. Made it easier. So I'm gonna swap out my plastic lenses. There's two of them there. One big one in the front that protects the uh, electric eye. And there's one in the back that protects the back side of the electric eye. And there was a gasket material around the perimeter. And this is what it is now. It's just totally, uh, it just fell apart. I'm gonna try to wrap some duct tape around the outside of this thing. And see if I can't seal it a little bit. Oh, that's terrible. I can't. It's all full of dust. You see all that dust? That's behind the safety glass. So I need to get rid of that somehow. All right, that's better. Now peel the safety sticker stuff off of this glass. Okay. All right. So that band-aid lasted like five minutes. This goes in here, but I don't know where, how my breath is getting in there to fog it. I think maybe there was a rubber thing around here, which there's not anymore. So maybe I'll also put some duct tape there. Like I put, I think I wasn't filming, but I wrapped the front lens with duct tape because it had this and it's gone. That's got to help a little bit, keep some dust out of there. I think I'm going to do the same with, um, with this. So this hood is roughly 14 years old and I've bought a new one since then but this one works so much better than a new one I, I haven't really used a new one much um, I will investigate to see if I can get uh, a new seal kit to make this thing uh, not fog up now this tape uh, helped a lot but it's still there's still a fogging problem it's just not as severe and the clear lenses um, where I replaced the old scratch ones that's that was huge so I don't know if I helped me but at least I should be able to see better through the lenses that aren't all scratched up try it Temporary face shield repair, a huge difference. All my wells are in the right general vicinity. I can see. Let's see uh, how to do here. Heck yeah, we're done straight. All right, not too shabby for a Sunday morning. And the table is relatively, I don't know what to say. It's not twisted, but there's still a hump in the middle. So I'm gonna have to put something substantial right here. Maybe just another angle, maybe a heavier angle. And 
push down on it to get the table flat before I weld it. But if it has a hump in the middle, it'll drain water in the rain, right? All right, good morning, boys and girls. This morning's challenge will be this seam here. I need to press it so it's flat because it's kind of wavy and I need to put something substantial in there so the table won't sag if you put something heavy in the middle. So I'm gonna use this rectangular tube. It's really the only thing I got within reason. Um, and then instead of welding down the center, I'll just have welds on both sides. When I flip it over, I weld it out. I'll have to cut it, the ends accurately so I can have good connections between there and there and get the rust off of it and get ready to weld it. I'm gonna grind this little weld down and that little weld down, do some cleaning. It's gonna be okay. I got the wire brush on the grinder and got most of the grime off of this rectangular tubing. And I got the two ends cut and notched to fit. And I got this end clamped down tight, which picked this end up about an inch off the table. But I think I will weld this and spin it around 100 degree, 180 degrees, clamp that down. And uh, I should kind of straighten it out, I'm thinking. I'm gonna put some weld here. All right, after I welded that in, it was almost perfect, but I could still see, see daylight under this uh, rectangular tube. So I put a little scrap of steel underneath the table in the middle. And I put some weight on this and it's closed up. It is, uh, there is no crack all the way. So I'm gonna weld it. I'm gonna skip weld it on both sides and uh, it's gonna be done. I'm not gonna weld it 100% ever. Okay, it's a new day. When I was here last, I was having trouble with my welder and I think the liner on the inside of my whip went bad and I could not get it out to save my life. And it is pretty old, so I bought a brand new one. Let's see if I can get it on, Let's make sure it fits. I think it does. Not only does everything fit, it's two foot longer than the old whip. And that's huge, because the old whip would just kind of barely reach around this side of the table and the machine slid all the way in. I don't have to worry about that anymore, yes. All right, we are all welded on the bottom, I think. I even plugged these two holes on the end, keep the wasps from getting in there. I haven't ground down anything or wire brushed anything yet. And this edge here is the edge I cut with the grinder and it's uh, some of it's super sharp, so it needs that. But I think I'm gonna slide it off the table so it's in a vertical position so I can put some more wells between the plate and the angle. Maybe twice as many as I have. I'm not going to weld it continuously. And go ahead and grind those pretty. And then maybe flip it right side up and see what it looks like. I think it's fairly straight. This bowed up a little bit when I uh, all, put all that heat in the middle. I think I can straighten that out with the ball when I turn it over. So it's pretty heavy. Um, I'm, I'm just going to lower it down to the ground and go around and weld the edges like twice as many welds as I have now. Okay, did that. Lots of welds, lots of grinding. It's not coming off. Now it's time to get it back on the table and I need to 100% this seam uh, and then grind it flat, which, uh, yeah, that'd be interesting. Um, I'll probably do like an inch and a half and skip, an inch and a half and skip because I don't want it to warp. Although, can't warp much because it's welded on both sides of this uh, rectangular tube just on the back side. Let's get it back up there. So here's the before. I kind of V'd it out with the grinder a little bit. And I'm not looking for, you know, 100% x-ray weld, 100% strength weld. I just want to seal that crap. So I'll probably make one pass and then do a lot of grinding. First pass. Might look ugly to you, especially if you're a welder. It looks pretty good to me. I'll grind it down and I'm sure I got a few spots to come back on. But uh, I don't, it's hard to tell if it's warped the tabletop any. I don't think it has. Okay. So my weld is still a little bit low. But the table, and that's all worn out. The table is pretty doggone flat. I used a big grinder, which I like to use. 
because it's kind of like borderline on how strong I am to hold it. Take so, yeah. that any day. I'm going to go around the edge with a flat disc. Because I did this edge with the grinder, and the grinder leaves sharpies. And I know it's a long ways from me getting to that stage where I need to clean it up, but I want to just ease the edges a little bit with the flat disc. Okay, much better, much better, much more user friendly. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna figure out what we're gonna do with the legs. I, I originally was gonna use that three inch pipe, but it's gonna be just too heavy. So I'm gonna do something a little more uh, in tune with the top, which I think is, I think this is eighth inch plate. It's, uh, yeah, it stiffened up pretty good when I put that brace down the middle. Well, I found my legs. One inch galvanized water pipe. And it's almost a full length, but it's not, it's been cut. Anyway, four pieces, 34 inches. And uh, we're gonna grind the galvanizing off and uh, weld them on there. Once again, it's been a few days. I'm back to work on the table. Last time I was here, I got two legs welded into place. Um, two more legs and then we'll have to figure out how to brace it. And uh, yeah, we're getting close here. And I will put pads on the feet because this may be out in the grass. I don't want it sinking. So yeah, we've got a few more things to do, but first, I have these, I don't even know what you call them, but I need to bend a circle on the end to make this into a screw eye for the shades. Okay, I have these things. They were from my days when I was a contractor, self-employed, which is roughly 40 years ago. And it's embarrassing how long I keep crap. But like, what do you do? You throw them away because you've had them a long time? You can't do that. Anyway, they've been sleeping in this little drawer and now I need a bunch of screw eyes. So I'm gonna try to bend these into the shape of a screw eye so I can at least use them for something, or at least six, at least a few of them, not all of them. So I took a piece of a round uh, bar stock and I put it in a vise and I drilled a little hole in it. The hole is just a tad bigger than the diameter of this, these little angle brackets. And I'm heating them up and bending them around the round bar. And they didn't come out as pretty as I was kind of hoping, but I think they're gonna work to uh, hold up the pulleys that hold up the shade. That's what these are for. One down, I think I did 12 of them. I don't need that many, but I did some extras just in case. It. I knocked them on the floor, just made sure that I wasn't going to step on them and they weren't going to get in the uh, hose and do damage to the rubber hose. So it turns out I had two different sizes in here. So I just made two different size hook eyes and we'll see which ones work better. I'm done with this now, let's get back to the table. So I have ground off the galvanizing everywhere it's gonna touch. I probably could do a little more there. I cut the bottom at a slope because it's hard to get it to sit flat on this little thin angle. And I had it stuck there with the magnet and I checked the uh, plumb with the framing square both ways. And it's pretty close. 
So what I'm going to do is put a little tack weld on the bottom where it's flexible and check it again. I probably have to bend it a little bit. It'll move. And then do that maybe twice and then weld it up pretty solid. Okay, the legs are welded. They need some kind of brace. They can't just cantilever down that far. Um, the strongest brace is 45 on both sides of each leg, but that kind of ruins the underneath to put anything. So I think I'm gonna put a horizontal, which is, uh, it's a good brace, but it makes a parallelogram, so it's not a perfect brace. So I have some more Dewey Dag rod, coil rod. This is rusty rod, it's like super strong. But I also have a bunch of half inch water pipe, like a bunch of half inch water pipe. I got this invasive tree right here. I think I'm going to use the half-inch water pipe and just deal with the uh, deal with the galvanizing. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Okay, braces. Cut two sticks the same length, and I just got them set on this part and clamped. Set on this part and clamped. I measured and cut a half-inch pipe, and put it in there, and it fit first time. Kind of surprising. So now I'm going to take it down. I've marked where I need to remove the uh, galvanizing. I have to remove the galvanizing from the end of this pipe and from that circle and then we'll put it back I'll weld it turn this thing 90 degrees and do it again i'll use the same two little sticks all the way around because it is pretty dang close this this elevation is a little bit different as you go around the corners but not very much close enough for the intended purpose too shabby it's like good clean wells that one's got a little soot on it but i think it's a good well see that red flashing light that means my battery is about to die and it will quit working after that i won't be able to use it but it's letting me weld all morning thank you helmet i'll get some batteries this afternoon so the legs and the leg braces are done i'm ready to flip it over but before i do i'm going to hit this bottom surface with the wire cup Kind of knock some of this rust off and i probably will paint it before i send it to dave's i got time and he doesn't um yeah come along wire cup this and uh, we'll go get some lunch another new day this project has really run on but anyway uh i wire brushed the bottom surface of the top so it's ready for paint and i'm gonna flip it over and adjust the legs probably there'll be one that'll be a little bit longer and it'll rock and we don't want it rock so uh, we'll adjust that and then I'll weld some sort of feet on the bottom so it won't sink into the grass or the dirt and then uh, we'll be ready for paint. Can't do it. We're gonna to need to get the forklift over here to help us out. So it's got a little rock to it. It's got a big rock to it, actually. Like a quarter of an inch, maybe. So I'm gonna cut the bottom of this leg off, uh, maybe a quarter inch, kind of guess at it, because this leg is cut real crooked, so it needs to be trimmed anyway. So I'm gonna get it over here to the side where I can reach it with a grinder, and I'm gonna pick it up. I don't want weight on it when I cut it. Otherwise, when I cut all the way through, It'll drop down and bind the blade. And on this particular machine, 
that blade gets so tight when you bind it that it's almost impossible to get loose. So I do not want to bind the machine. Plus it's just not, it's not a good thing to do that. So we're gonna drag it over here, prop it up and whack a little piece off and then try it. Well, that was kind of scary, but I got it right the first time. Uh, no more rock. So now I need to just figure out what I'm gonna use for feet and uh, do a little bit more grinding on the galvanizing and put them on there. I got my plasma torch out and I tried to cut out the shape of a foot. Pretty pitiful, huh? Okay, I give up on that. I'm gonna cut four circles and use this, uh, whatever this is, as a guide to try to get them kind of round. Okay, that's gonna be the ugliest one. I'm gonna get better as I go. Okay, I have four identical and perfectly round feet, almost. And I managed to grind the galvanizing off of these two back legs by just propping them up in the air a little bit. So now if I get the table set back on this side of this well, whoever made this table added this on and it comes up terribly. Um, and it was a machine shop. I mean, it was a fabrication shop, but anyway, uh, set the table on the little round things and weld them and that's it for the table except for uh finishing i think okay four little round feet in place this uh this ought to be like the easiest welding i've done so far the feet are all welded now i'm gonna take this thing down i'm gonna use the forklift and turn it upside down and i'm gonna caulk and paint underneath the top and then i hope i can flip it over while that paint's still wet and I want to caulk this so, you know, moisture doesn't get in there. And I got some epoxy to fix that crack on the top. So that's what we're going to do. The forklift has been on a uh, heart lung machine for a while. It's dying. This battery is dying. Um, it doesn't last very long at all. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it'll probably be an upcoming video. Okay, we're gonna paint the table with this tar guard. It's a Sherwin-Williams cold tar epoxy. It was given to me, it's an unopened can. It's supposed to be good for three years, unopened. I don't think it's that old. But anyway, it's uh, four parts of this to one part of this. And I'm sure when I open it, it's gonna smell horrendous and it's gonna be really hard to mix, but uh, we'll give it a shot. Otherwise, it's just gonna go to waste. It's been sitting around here for a while. It's more stanky than you can even imagine, and it's kind of thick. You can see where it's holding up my mixing stick. I got some ventilation. I'm going to try to stir it up a little bit, see if we can't use it. So that, my friends, was a disaster. Probably the worst paint disaster I've ever had. Luckily, it was on the bottom. So what happened was I mixed the uh, tar guard like you're supposed to. I mixed it by weight instead of volume because I couldn't get the stuff to self-level in the cup. I never knew how much I had, so I did it by weight. It's probably pretty close. And I started to paint it with the brush to get all the corners, and it was too thick. So I grabbed the can that was stacked on top of the other two cans, which is this Tenemic can, different brand. Um, and I didn't even think about it because typically the guys at the paint place give me compatible products. So I put some of this Tenemic stuff in there thinking it would thin it out a little bit and it did for like 30 seconds and then the paint turned into cottage cheese it just curled up and just made the it was like it was like trying to paint with an old 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 foam brush that falls apart and the problem was this is not a solvent or a thinner this is a hardener for a different um 
type of paint. So I got two hardeners in there, the right hardener and the wrong hardener, mix it up and it just kicked off and went crazy. Um, but I didn't have enough. So I got a scraper and I scraped all the big bumps off and I went and mixed another batch properly, except I did it by weight and not by volume, but I think that's gonna be okay. And I covered it all up. So that's why it's so rough. It was a lot rougher before I scraped all the stuff off. So I just hope it gets hard. I think it'll get hard. It's the degree of how hard they get is like shelf life and all that stuff. They always get hard, but at, after a certain point, they're not gonna get as hard and be as durable as they're supposed to be. But uh, luckily this is the bottom. I'll be a little more careful on the top. Okay, my heart rate's down to normal. Now I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna turn it over and stand it up like it's supposed to be so I can caulk <clears throat> this edge and allow the caulk proper curing time before I put the finish coat on. I caulked all these joints and I painted right over it. But, so the caulk may never get hard, but that's okay to keep the water out. And then on the top, on the well seam, I wanna put some epoxy and smooth that out. So I'm gonna pick this up and flip it and I'm trying to figure out the best way, but uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, another new day and overnight the epoxy got real hard which is good because it like everything else in my life has passed its best by date but it got hard so i can sand this sand the top and paint it with the cold tar and uh put it out in the sun and we'll be done with this thing in record time what a month so i would never actually buy this stuff um i get it from the paint fairy that's an industrial coating contractor friend of mine and they have to buy new products for every single job they need paper trails and whatever's left from previous jobs it's usually a liability for these guys so uh yeah this stuff is this is how it comes it is super thick you usually have to have a big power tool to mix this um it's stanky it's nasty and i you know i wouldn't use it except i have it so uh i'm going to use it on its tabletop this is a perfect place to use this stuff it's kind of very very long lasting um doesn't set up well in the sun i mean it doesn't last well in the sun it gets kind of chalky like most epoxies don't do real well in the sun so i'm getting some in the cup and i know what the empty cup weighs and then i'm going to weigh how much i have in there and that'll let me know how much hardener to add um because it's supposed to be mixed by volume, but I don't know how in the world you would do that with this stuff. Okay, the scale says 20.2, the empty cup. Oh, I got a stick in here too. Let me get rid of this stick. Okay, I'm at 19.2, the empty cup was uh, one ounce. So I got 18 ounces of material. So a quarter of that is three. I need to get, I need to uh, add the hardener until I get up to 21. Easy way to do that either. All right, so I did some funky math there, but I corrected myself and it is mixed properly by weight, not volume. Oh, all right, that's it. So get rid of that. Close the top of this. Mix. And I may put a little 
of the solvent in there, which is that MEK, which is a proper solvent for epoxies. Mix this goop up. And uh, I know that that black stuff looks like it's like bad, like it's too thick, but that's that's coal tar. It's epoxy, coal tar epoxy. It's always like that. It's nasty stuff, but it like is almost bulletproof. I really, after working in chemical plants and sewer plants and water plants for decades, um, and seeing all kind of fancy coatings where you need to have special equipment and all that stuff, and seeing them fail good old cold tar epoxy you can get a couple of labors out there mix it up put it on it's gonna it works it's good stuff it's good stuff so how do you spend 20 hours building a five hour table you you don't buy anything new you use junk to make it you know yeah you don't spend any money but you spend a lot of time but that's okay i got time so far like willie says i woke up not yet dead again today okay table is finished came out pretty decent um, now this coal tar epoxy will need to be top coated because it like most epoxies it doesn't do well with the Sun the Sun will fade it make it kind of funky looking but any top coat will work just to keep Sun off of it and actually you could probably use latex paint if you want it doesn't have to be anything special all right well thanks for watching